Hello, this is Questionable Coding with Vladimir, and today we're going uh, to solve an, a task called Reverse uh, String. It's quite a famous task, you can face it during interviews, it's like a, a basic thing to tell if a person knows how to use built-in functions, for example, or use a basic for loop. So as many things in coding, it can be done in multiple ways, and we'll cover at least five, and uh, maybe different flavors of these five uh, implementations. So, yeah, let's start with the basic one, with a for loop. I prepared a very nice function called reverse, which uh, accepts one argument, str, and uh, it has reverse string variable, which we'll return in the end after we'll figure out how to reverse the string. And we, we have a console log of uh, the result of this reverse function. And we are passing a string called any string with arrows, just uh, for visual identity. And uh, we'll start with the four basic for loop. Sorry, it's wrong language. Basic for loop, um, which will require to create an index. And uh, we'll go tail str length not included. I plus plus. I recommend to memorize basic for loop because it will help a lot in many places. And wh what we're going to do next uh, is we'll update a reverse string with the current chart plus reverse string, everything that was there before. And it should work, uh, yeah, that's an expected result. Okay, uh, we'll use um, a reversed uh, for loop for the second example. We'll call it reverse2, two. reverse2. Two. For this, we'll have to rewrite the for clause and everything uh, inside it. So we'll start with i equals str length minus minus 1. So uh, indexes are zero based and length gives us a, a not zero based value, so we need to subtract 1. And then we'll go till i um, more or equal to zero because we want to include the zero index. And i minus minus. In this case, we want to apply string to the end because every element will it will start from the end and to go to, to the very beginning and this should also work we can simplify it a little bit by short concatenation which also looks pretty good what I don't like is uh, doing minus one I don't like this style of uh, I don't like the reverse loop in general but I think it's only my concern so let's see the next example. It will be using a built-in structure code for off. So instead of for, we're going to use this one. It, it's a simpler structure. Let char off string. So we'll iterate through the entire string, getting one char after another. It will reduce the complexity regarding uh, the indexes. Yeah, and we'll do the same thing as we did before in the first example. We'll first apply char and then we'll sum up with the reverse string. And it should show the same result, of course. And I think the fourth one will be a flavor of the first example. So we still have a reverse function, we'll call it verse 4. And we still have a normal for loop, but we'll change the order of our arguments. And we'll do this order. I think it's, it's more natural, at least for me. But we'll have to calculate index for every char. And we'll just subtract the current index from, uh, from the length. And we also need to do minus 1 for the same reasons I described above. And it should also work. Yeah, I think uh, these are four flavors of four loops for reversing a string. Let's go to another implementation. And we're going to use built-in functions. It's pretty convenient way to do this stuff because it's very short and uh, very readable. But uh, the problem, the downside is that if you'll be asked to reverse the string during an interview, 
probably uh, they expect you to implement some algorithm because uh, using built-in functions it proves that you have a good memory and uh, nothing else so I would recommend you to know this thing uh, maybe to use it in production code but not to rely on it everywhere so what we need to do is to return a string that we will first split into pieces into letters uh, creating an array and for this array we can call reverse function which will basically reverse the array and then we need to join it back again into a string uh, using a join function with uh, also with an empty string otherwise it will join with commas which uh, will ruin the implementation. Now we run it and it works. Another flavor of this that I saw uh, on Medium is to use a spread operator to turn a string into an array. It doesn't change too much but you just can use it if uh, it feels more convenient. Um, yeah, basically the result is the same and this is how we can do it with built-in functions. If you want to make your life harder, you can use the recursion to reverse the string. That's not the, the recommended way to do in production because uh, using recursion uh, may be dangerous. For example, it's not readable, it's uh, hard to track, I mean the, the entire code flow, and uh, also it can lead to stack overflow if uh, the code tree will be too deep. But it it's a very nice thing to know for interviews because a lot of interviewers they want to check your algorithmic approaches and um, understanding recursion and an ability to work with uh, such uh, complex flows um, it's priceless so I would recommend you to just get familiar with the recursion I won't spend time uh, explaining it right now but basically we have uh, to cover two cases in recursion. First, the base case, uh, something that will happen in the end of our call tree, and we will return the entire recursion to the very beginning, eventually. Um, so if we ha will have an empty string, then we'll return an empty string. We could do, it, uh, do this using uh, the variable itself, but I would like to be more explicit, but it's basically the same. And another thing is a recursive case, which will happen most of the times, except one, when we uh, are calling the same function, passing the same string, but without the first character. Uh, for this, we are using a function called substring, and we are passing index one to start from. And we need to also add uh, the last symbol, which will be, uh, not the last, but the first should be a str0. So the trick is that the first thing to happen uh, it will be a reverse function call and this concatenation will happen in the very end and at first the reverse function will call itself and it will once again go to this line and still execute a new reverse function call so we'll do it uh, over and over again with a smaller string each time and um, this concatenation will be waiting for us on every level so eventually we'll face the situation when a string will be empty and we'll return an empty string and at that moment we'll just apply the last existing character so uh, there deep down uh, in the call tree it will be the last character and it will return the entire thing and do concatenation once again but with uh, another character and so on. So that's how on like uh, closing the entire tree it will create a reverse string. So we'll launch it and yeah it shows what we expect. So that's how the recursion works. Another thing that we can do is to use a stack. For this we need to convert the string to, to an array. So let's create an array called strr. str split. And for this array, well, it's not empty. We'll append 
every popped element to a reverse string. Every time we call pop, it will uh, take the, la the last uh, character of str array. It will remove it from, from the array, so it will be smaller each time. And it will be applied to reverse string. That's how we'll get the result. Yeah, this is, this is it. We will finish this with uh, a reduce function, which is very useful in JavaScript, so I recommend you to learn it. But we can also use it to reverse the string, uh, but it's not like an, a usual thing to do with, uh, with this function. So what we need to do is to return a string that was uh, splitted into uh, an array of chars, as we did it before. And we need to call a reduce function for this new array, which will have a callback for every, uh, every char that we have in an array. Callback will consist uh, of two arguments. It will have an accumulator that will be the same for every call. And uh, it will contain not a string, but a char, our current char from an array. So what we need to do is uh, we need to concatenate char with an accumulator and it will be returned from the callback. Also, we need to set a default value as the second argument of this reduce function. This will set uh, the initial value for the accumulator. Okay, in the end, we'll have, uh, it will return an accumulator, the entire function will return the accumulator, which will hold the reverse string. That's it. Maybe it sounds complicated if you never faced uh, the reduce function, but that's what you need to learn. Yeah, and we have the reverse string. For example, if we would uh, change the order of the arguments, we will just recreate the same string uh, that was passed to the function. Yes, same string. So that's it. Okay, so we went through five implementations of a reverse string function, and uh, most of them were very different. And also we covered several flavors, uh, which were more or less the same, but uh, also uh, showed how flexible the language can be and you can do the same thing in multiple ways. So you need to be careful with choosing a uh, specific implementation depending of, uh, of an environment in which you are coding. So if it's a production, production code that I would bet on readability, on an easy uh, to track flow, and if you are uh, attending an interview, it's nice to know every case, especially uh, hard cases uh, like with recursion. So, yeah, spend some time on learning uh, built-in functions, uh, basic contracts, constructs like for loop and uh, the recursion, of course. So, yeah, uh, stay tuned. We'll cover more in upcoming videos.